are we trying to turn over? Have, has anybody experienced war? All right. What is it that when you experience war, what are you going into? Exactly. And so you are, you are going into something that is the unknown. Exactly. And, and so in that, in that situation, you yourself, if you're going into that, you have to, it's not that you're psyching yourself up to get killed, you're psyching yourself up to live. You're following directions. You're being obedient to um, whatever they have told you, whatever they have guided you in to do. And if you fail in those areas, well, then a lot of times you're going to be killed or something's going to take place. But there's oftentimes in war that you're alone. That there's nobody holding your hand. You're in a foxhole by yourself and you have to make right and correct decisions. And in our Christian walk, in our Christian faith, there's so many times that we are in a battle and we are battling alone. And God is saying, hey, I want to be with you in this battle. I want, to, I want to help you through this chaos. I have direction for you in this. But we go, you know what? I got this. I can handle this on my own. Sin brings about sin. You can't, you can't stop that part. If you sin, sin is coming. The effects of sin is going to take place in your life. So who is the one that is responsible for allowing sin to come into your life? Free will. So the one sitting next to you is the one who's putting that into your, into your life, right? It could be. It could very well be, but you still have to make the decision to do what? Exactly. So here's the thing. When you were, when you were in high school, how many, how many were involved in peer pressure in high school? Anybody here? Peer pressure in elementary school. <laughs> All right. Um, how many of peer pressure at work? There's peer pressure wherever you go. And so... And we all understand this peer pressure because what happens is you want to be, you want to be liked or you want to be uh, involved with a group that, that, okay, it's the in thing, so it's okay, right? If they're doing it, well, then I'll just be a part of it. How many know that doesn't work? Yeah, it doesn't work. And so, so here's the thing, is in our life, we have to make this decision that we are not going to do. You tell your children. How many have children? Don't you tell your children, hey, when you go and this is taking place, don't do this. Yes? I was watching a, um, a video, our, our, uh, how many know Hazel? Every once in a while she comes in here and little Hazel. So they decided to do a test on her and they did a video and they put candy in front of her and told her, do not touch the candy. Do not eat the candy. We're going to go off in this room and then we'll come back and we're going to, you know, then we will let you, you know, have some. But, don't touch it. Don't eat it. You know, and so little Hazel, cute little thing. Why would anybody want to do that to a child, right? You're thinking, that's cruel. So they set this little thing in front of her, and, and then they're, um, they go off the back. You can hear them. Don't you touch that. Don't you. <laughs> She's like looking around, you know, and then she looks at it. And I'm like, oh, there it is. She just looked at it, right? She looked at it. Now she's thinking, mm. and you could see her, she's licking her lips as she's, you know, looking down at it. Then she looks over where they went, both parents went into the back room, and she looks over there like, are they looking? And she went and she touched it, she felt it, she didn't eat it. She put it back down, she did that, and she went on, you know, by probably a minute is what they let her, you know, have this. And I was thinking to myself, my word. It's exactly what we're, we do. God says, hey, don't do this. 
And he says, now listen to me. I'm over here. And you can hear the voice. How many of you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, stop it. Don't do, don't, don't do this. And then you're like, yeah, but it's just, yeah. Or you're looking at it. You're, you start, we're going we're gonna to read the verse that, that when Adam and Eve were in the garden and they were first tempted. Well, what is it that they did? What is it that happens when you are tempted? What is it that draws you away? So Hazel did great. She didn't eat this thing. She didn't eat it, but she did when they came back and they said, go ahead. But how long would it take? I mean, do you think she would have made it five minutes? <laughs> I don't know if I would have made it five minutes. What are you tell me? You know, so it's like, you just know these things take places. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is this. Um, when I was, when I was uh, I'm trying to remember my age when I was about that time, maybe 10 years old. And I remember going down to the neighbors and we, I, I used to walk this area. It was about a mile on the backside. And I'd go through the woods and I'd come back down and I'd come to the backside of the neighbors, the place. And the Winishes, Jerry Winish, he made bread every weekend because, I mean, they had 11 boys and one girl. And, I mean, how many old you got to bake, right? Like, well, she baked, I mean, she baked good. She had the old stove, old cook stove. She got that just right, heated up. She knew the recipe, the old style recipes, right? She had bread raising in the morning. She put it in there. And I just knew that on this day, if I came at a certain time, I was going to get fresh bread, cut open, butter, and strawberry jam. Oh, my word. And you guys, your mouth is watering already. And all these things take place. But on my way there, so I would come down, and they had this, they had this kind of a, a junk area in the back with the broken down of the, the uh, uh, how would you put it, like maybe a snow collapsed it you know I don't know I'm just a kid I'm just realizing these things now like okay that's probably what happened but anyway uh and a dog was on a chain and this dog named King I think I pretty much remember that was his name is King and that dog hated me like uh, you know you come down and that dog that on the chain and I'd be just just outside you know there's this path that runs around it and that dog knew where his length was. It knew his territory. So I'm walking by, and I'm coming down there, and, and he comes out on that chain and whack like this, you know. Ah, God. He's standing up. And he's, I mean, if he could, I'm just like this going, oh, my word, this dog's going to kill me. Ten years old, right? And so um, this week after week. So this dog got smart on me. And what he did is he would, he started to go, okay, in my chain, if I go this far, he's going to go this far. So that one week, he's like going, I come down there, right? And I, I'm like, oh, okay, so his chain must have got shorter? I don't know. Anyway, the dog goes like here, and he's coming like this, and he's like, he's like there, and I run through, scurry through, right? So the next week, he gets me. Because I'm in his, I'm in his domain, and he's not going to go like this, you know. He, he can get me. I am in his territory. And that dog nailed me. He bit me right here, and he would not let go. And he put punctured right here on my, you know. And I'm like, dog's hanging on. I'm running the dog's hanging on to me. He's not going to let me go. And so anyway, I didn't get stitches. Thank the Lord. I just... They just had to give me some more bread and strawberries, and I was, I was happy and fine. Um, but they, you know, put band-aids on me and that and whatnot. And, the, and anyway, the dog was taken care of after that, and I was like, oh, man, I felt really bad. But the whole story is this. Satan is, are we, are we, are we in his territory? When, when he was kicked out of heaven, the Bible says this, is that this is, this is his what? Yeah. So if it's his domain, then we think that we are out of his... We are not out of his reach, are we? He, we are in his domain, but God says this, 
I will do what? I will deliver you because I will be with you. And you have to make that free will choice whether you're going to follow me or not follow me. If you don't follow me, then we give way to something that is not good. When we start to dabble in something that we know is going to affect our life, when God says, don't do this, and we start to dabble in it, can I tell you this? You are opening up the territory of demons. And I often, I often think like, man, God, you know, I, I have fear to go in this area. Let's, I'm just going to put it here. On the, where the rubber meets the road. There's some things in my life, right? And so, so one of these things, so if I'm fearing to go in this area, and God says to go in this area, but I'm fearing that, what is it that Satan is going to do? He's going to make sure that he puts a little more of these temptations of more fear to get me to fear more so that I won't listen to myself, or that I do listen to myself. I'm not listening to God. I'm not being obedient. If God says that he will care for me, take care for me, do whatever it is, and I'm fearing to go forward, then what is that? It's sin. If I know that God wants me to go to this point and I'm not going to go there because I fear that, then it is sin in my life. And I am opening, listen, I am opening a way for demons to come. Am I going to be possessed? No. Some of you look at some people and go, you're possessed. <laughs> right? No, you're not possessed. If you know Jesus Christ your Savior, you're not possessed. What happens is, is, are we being separated from God because we're opening the door for demons? It is their territory. We, we are so like, Oh, it's not going to affect me. Walking in this area is not going to affect me. But it does affect us. So we're going to read this. Let's start in um, Genesis 3, 1 through 13. Genesis 3, 1 through 13. Now the serpent was more crafty than other beasts of the field that the Lord God had made. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. God, may your word be so powerful that it allows us to see who Satan is and what he wants to do and how he wants to destroy each and every life sitting here. If he can destroy each and every life here, then he has destroyed even families that are attached to us here. He can destroy a whole country by getting in to just a small area of people. So Lord God, may we see how powerful that he is but know that you are most powerful and that you will overcome all things in our life. And then we pray. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast in the field. And I always thought of this thing, and I'm thinking, why is this, like, why is this saying the serpent is more crafty? So what is this thing? How many know that this animal, whatever it was, was not slithering on the ground? It wasn't slithering in a tree until what? Till after the curse, till after the sin. So whatever this creature was, I don't believe that this creature was something that was like grotesque. You know what I mean? And so what did Satan do? Exactly. So, so, and my other part was this. If you came up to an animal and it started talking to you, wouldn't you think this is kind of strange? I know, it would be great. And so here's Eve who is talking to this creature. And it's not, it's not the snake yet, but it's a creature. And so as she's talking, what is, it that she, what is it that this creature said? It is the serpent, it is Satan, who is getting into the first part of temptation. And how many know that temptation comes first by sight? So when Satan comes to you and says, says hey, I'm going to offer you this. 
How many know that that's the first initials? You have a sight of it. You, you have a realization of it. If I am being tempted, this is, what, this is what God tells us to do, is flee from who? Flee from yourself. Flee from Satan. Yes? He says to flee from him. Don't, don't go, oh, I got this one. Don't do that. If I tell you, let's see, I'm going I'm to do, do it this way. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put something in your head, okay? Like, um, all right. We like food. I like food. Here we go. Hot roast beef sandwich. Hot roast beef sandwich, mashed potatoes, gravy, laying right there, right? And if I eat that and I eat two helpings of it or three helpings of it, I know that this is not going to be good, right? Thanksgiving, one of those things, right? So let's just say this is our temptation, okay? Everybody got that visual? This is, okay, one is okay, but the second plate's coming, all right, and we're not supposed to have this thing. Everybody got this? This mashed potato, beautiful steam coming up, uh, homemade mashed potatoes, gravy's just just right. I mean, it's all there. You're like ready. You're di- you're just oh, I gotta have this, right? You got it in your head. Now, what's your favorite dessert? What is it? Mine's pie. Mine's pie. How many like cake? How many like ice cream? Okay, let's just go ice cream. Let's go. What are your favorite ice cream? Put caramel on there. How many like, uh, I like some caramel. I like a little uh, whipped cream or what's the marshmallow stuff? You know, hot fudge and marshmallow on ice cream. Coconut ice cream. Have that, right? How many like that? Like if you like coconut ice cream, you put marshmallow, hot fudge, real hot fudge, right? I mean, the stuff that's just, woo, it's good stuff, right? How many are not thinking of the hot roast beef now you're thinking of the, your favorite? Here's, here's what I'm saying to do. You can say, and I can say all I want to, that, wait a second, I'm tempted in this area, and so I can't overcome this. And so I, I, I'm going to indulge in this. Listen, are we allowing something to capture you in a temptation? Or, listen, are we going to change it to think about something else? If, if Eve would have looked at it and said, God said it is what? Not for us to have. It is not for us to have. And so there was other things in the garden that were more pure, that were better, that would not bring upon this. There was so many things. How many know there was only one thing? And there was all kinds. They could have went swimming. They could have went and just said, you know what, let's go take a walk. Let's go, man, let's, we can go do this instead of this. But instead, they stopped, they looked, And they pondered and pondered. And when you start pondering on something, doesn't it just get more and more? Like, I've got to ponder more. I have to know this. I have to be a part of this. I have to have this. And when that happens, what is it? Let's read on. Did God actually say, this is Satan, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? See, a question is always brought to you before you enter into sin. And that question is, will it really hurt you? Will it really take away from you? What does a demon do? Does a demon show you the aftermath of something? Or does it just show you the good coming up to the aftermath how is it that a lion comes after you the lion seeks to do what it it doesn't just come right at you immediately it's it's following you (coughs) up in the mountains we i've told of different stories of people that have gone hunting and they're on a horse 
and the lion, there's a, a mountain lion that is, that is after them. They're listening to the horses. If they don't listen to the horse, they don't listen to some of the animals, then what happens? They, they get attacked from above, get attacked from a side. It's not that they're getting attacked right away. It's that they're going down this, this avenue. They're going down this path, and they get to this end of the path, and that lion knows that he can get whatever it is there because he's done it before. He's done it many, many times before. And will Satan attack you? Yes, he will. Will a demon come after you and attack you? Yes, he will. But he will not do it in a way that's right away. He will come at you with something that is appealing. He will come at you with questions in your mind and say, and say hey, is this really true? Does God really not want me to have this? And it's until we look to God and ask God, what is it that Eve did? And what is it that Eve didn't do? Did Eve go to God and ask God, hey, there was this, this creature that was stirring my mind, and he said this, so what do, you, what, do you, what do you think, God? So here we read, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you shall die. And what did she do? She took it, she touched it. Did the touching make it sin? And then she took it, she ate it, and then she gave it to who? Gave it to Adam, okay? So here we go. But the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes, isn't that interesting? Delight to the eyes. Delight to the soul. We think it's going to help our bodies. We think it's going to help our mind. We think it's going to help us. But what does sin do? Keep on going. And that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate, and then the eyes of both of them were what? Opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths and loincloths, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. If you're following God, if you're following God and you're doing that which is right, then listen, you don't have to fear what's going to take place if you didn't sin. Right? But when we sin, and go against God, what is it that we have? We have a guilty feeling. We have a conscience that comes over us. We have this deal, and now we have to do what? We have to face God with what we've done or what we didn't do. And as they are facing him, and they're looking at this, and they experience what? What do they experience for the first time? Shame. What is it that sin does to us? It brings about shame. And yet we go, wait a second. It's appealing to me. It's, it's what I want. Doesn't the Bible say that we war against flesh and blood? We war against the powers and principalities of what? The air. Who is a part of these principalities and powers of the air? Angels, good angels bad angels satan and all the power that god has up in heaven which ones are we going to put in our life and it should be who it should be christ it should be those those angels that follow christ right if we are if we are allowing just just a little bit of temptation to control our life then who is in control? The Bible says that you can't walk on what? You can't walk on a fence. Or you're, gonna, you're, you're either on one side or you're on the other. You can't serve the both. You can't serve Satan and you can't serve God at the same time. You're either or... And so there's, when we look at this and we say, okay, verse 10, and he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was what? Afraid. 
because I was naked. First time that they're afraid of God. Isn't that amazing? What is it that makes us afraid of God? Our sin, our guilt, our shame. What is it that separates us from God? Our sin. A relationship. That, that relationship that you so want to have with God, and you wake up in the morning, you're like, I just want to feel clean. I want to feel good. I want to feel the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to, I want to feel alive in Christ. If we don't, then we need to sit back and we need to go what? Take a look at what's in our life. What is keeping us from having that relationship? What territory are you allowing Satan to open up? A demon to open up? We already know his territory is here. But what does he have to offer that Christ doesn't? When God says that we are to be obedient, he says to, to be obedient not because, not because it's going to take from your life, but because it's going to give to your life. What is it that we, we, we look at things and we like, well, wait a second, this isn't going to affect me. Yes, it is going to affect you because one sin that we're holding on to, one sin that we knowingly are holding on to against God, and we're like, God, this isn't going to affect me. It's not going to take place. One of those areas you are allowing, I am allowing a demonic being to come in. And can I tell you this? Is that it's like that dog. The dog knows how to get you. The dog knows how to get me. And will he get me? If I'm in his territory, he's going to get me. If I willingly am putting myself in, in the demonic territory, well, I have God. I can walk through it, and I can go right through this demonic area, right? Who is the one that, says that, that did that? Paul did that, didn't he not? Didn't he come up to a person and he cast out demons? There's other ones that said, you know what, I can cast out demons. And they said, and then they talked directly to this, the, the, the individual who was being possessed by a demonic spirit. And what did the spirit tell them? Paul I knew, no, Jesus Christ I know, but I don't know you. And they stripped them of their clothes and they went running through. Are you like that? You think that you're following Christ? But you don't have the power because... The demonic spirit is a part of your life. It's not that you're possessed. It's that you're allowing the spirit to have control instead of Jesus Christ having control. I, I was like, man, I, I heard this, this part of this message and I was listening to this guy and I'm like, oh my word. And then he, he went in and for in the next two weeks we're going to get deeper into this. There are things that... that are affecting your life because someone else affected it. Someone did something to you and it opened the door for a demonic in the, not being or whatever, yeah, but the being or whatever it is, but that, that power that is keeping you from going forward with Christ because all you can think about is what? What happened to you? Bitterness. Not forgiving. These things that come into our life that, that were not your fault, but yet we're holding on to them. We're letting that spirit um, of have control when Christ says what? Let it go. Let it go. There are so many things that we do in our life that are sinful because we haven't let go of the past. We're still fighting. We're still at war. Instead of saying, Lord, you won the battle. You won the war. You won all this. 
all I have to do is trust in you, give my life to you, and, and I can be free from what? The past. We're, like I said, we're going to get into detail with this the next week. Satan, the Bible says that he comes and he seeks you out. He doesn't seek you out to lift you up, to build you up. The Bible says he seeks you out to what? He kills and destroys. And what we allow to come into our life, because we can be so passive with, with certain things that are coming into our, what we watch, what we read, what we, and we can just go, oh, this, it didn't affect me. Did it? We could go even as far as having things in our house that uncle so-and-so had or grandpa so-and-so had. And it wasn't of God, but yet we don't want to get rid of it because they had it. There's so many things in life that God says, look, we are not in a war against each other, against flesh and blood. We're at war against what? The principalities of what? And powers of the air. And you know it when you're under battle, when you're under temptation. And when we become deceived by Him, when we accept that what he offers in a temptation because we want it, because we saw it, and we didn't bring it before God and ask him, God, what is it about this that's going to affect my life? Well, you either trust him or you don't trust him. You obey him or you don't obey him. Faith gives God's protection and careful watch. Faith in what? Well, wait a second, I, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. I accepted him. How many here, and you, just, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many here accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior? They asked for forgiveness. You asked for him to cleanse you of all your sins, right? Past, present, future. And because of that, we live forever with him. But how many know that you fight a battle every single day? There isn't one day that you're not going to fight a battle against the principalities and powers of the air. How is it that we go, wait a second, if I'm, not going to, if I'm going to fight this every day, then God give me strength to fight it. And that is what this message is about. That's what in the next couple weeks, I want you to have that power. I want you to understand where Satan is. I want you to understand that, that he is trying to destroy you, not God. Amen. Because he is try- the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to us. But if we are in sin, if we're involved in sin, then how can he talk? We are separated. When, when God came and he walked and he was there, what, why were they so afraid? Because they had sin and they didn't even know what it was. We know what it is. And are we dabbling in it? Are we allowing the crutch take effect in our lives. We're going to talk about an occult. And how many know what a cult is? An occult? Okay. Um, I want us to get deeper into what an occult. How many know that it, a cult is a hidden secret? We're going to talk about that next week. We're going to talk about the next couple weeks about this. And you go, well, wait a second, I'm not practicing an occult, are we? Do we have a hidden secret that's inside of us, that's keeping us from God? And God says this, that if you have anything before me, anything, then you are serving another God. You're not serving the God. We see marriages in a wreck. We see families in a wreck. We see America fantastic, right? 
in a wreck. When America was following God, and when America was putting things in perspective with God, then what happened? We were, it was a force to be reckoned with because who was in control? God was in control. Did it mean that, that, did it mean that you weren't going through chaotic times? No. How many wars did they go through because they chose to follow God? How many wars has America gone through and been a part of to, to stop Satan? But now we see a different. We see, okay, we're going to go to war for power. We're going to go to war for strength. We're going to go to war because it's going to be a political, whatever, stamp on my shoulder or whatever. Not because you're fighting for something that God wants you to stand on. If we could get back to that where we're serving God, right? What is God about? What is Jesus about? He's about peace and restoration. Amen? How many want peace and restoration? <laughs> right? New roads. In your family's life, in your family's life, and listen, I, I'm not here to go pick on you and go, look, my life, my family, destruction. Good, bad, ugly. But through it all, th listen, through it all, Christ can have what? Victory. He's already won the battle. Why are we listening to Satan and going, well, wait a second, I came from this. and we're, 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 I'm telling you, we're going to have a, a sermon on this part. Well, wait a second, I came from this, and so I can't help it to be like this. No, you can. You can. Your past is not your future. The past helps you get through the future with Jesus Christ. In our life and as we are following, hidden secrets are one of the worst, the worst enemy that you can face is your hidden secrets. Because you are allowing a distraction from serving God. And that distraction is taking you from what is righteous, what is holy, what is just. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the what? Abominable practice of those nations if you were to look today compared to a hundred years ago our nation what is it that's, that is, is the difference from a hundred years ago to today there's a lot of things and that's one of them we'll be talking about is abortion but here's the thing is when we look at this the abominable practices of nations it is up to you and me personally to do what? God, I'm going to follow you. You can't go to your government and say, look, you got to change your ways. How many know that doesn't work? But you yourself, you yourself can do a change one at a time. Many great things have taken place from one person changing their heart towards God. In your family, in your family, if there's chaos, if there's, all, if there's all these things, we need to think about it. Wait a second, where did it come from? We're going to talk about this. Generation, a past generation, passing down what? A curse. Can you break the chain? Can you? Will you? That's the question. Will you? You can do it through Jesus Christ. You can do it through His power. You can do it through His strength. And you can lead your family to a different place. Different place. There shall not be found among you any who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Well, I don't do that. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or, 
or list goes on and on, or choirs of the dead. Well, wait a second, maybe I did that a couple of times. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. Why? Why is it an abomination to the Lord? Why are those things? Because they're not. You're, you're opening up. Listen, those things are opening up a demonic not a spell, not a curse, but a door. And it's influencing all of your life. It is attaching to you like a bloodsucker that won't come off. And it will destroy you, it will destroy your family. The curse that comes down through. Jesus Christ says, look, we need to take a hold of what is taking place and just follow me. Get rid of it. I can take that blood sucker and take him off of you. You just got to let me. When we talked about earlier this morning, and we talked just before we started singing, right? And you said what? Peter? Let's name some. Peter. David. Did they go into sin? But did they allow that to, to, to influence them any longer? What did it take for them to just go, God, I let you give you control? What did it take? Ah, the surrender. So here's the thing when will you and I totally surrender to Jesus Christ? He wants to do a work in us, He wants to use us. But if we're not totally surrendering to Him, you know, wait a second, I. There's, there's this that's going on in my life, and this is this going on in my life, and this is going on in my life, and you know, this is always in my life, and this is chaos, yes? Oh, there's, you don't, how many know the future tomorrow? How many know the future next month? How many know the future for your life next year? How many remember the things that you thought were going to take place and they didn't take place, and now you're like, what in the world happened? This is five years from now. I never thought I was going to be here. I never thought this was going to take place in my life. But it is. So where did I go wrong? Maybe you didn't go wrong. Maybe, you're, maybe something took place in your life to get you to change to go in a direction that you need to go. That happens. You didn't do anything wrong. It's that God is changing your path and you're not listening. You're not waking up. And so he needs to do something drastic to get you to change your life. But listen, you know... You know whether it's sin. You know whether it's not sin. You know whether God is trying to change your life. You know because the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you. But you don't know if you can't hear Him. Because we have opened the door to a demonic influence. And a lot of times I look at our Christian life and our Christian walk and we're like, why? you know, you're like, why aren't we going forward? Why isn't... Why are we going backward? When we look at Israel, what happened to Israel? Israel, every single time God was trying to get them to go forward, where did they go? Why? Why did they go backward? Because they wouldn't listen. To who? They wouldn't listen to Moses? <laughs> Probably a good thing they didn't listen to Moses a few times. They didn't listen to Aaron? They didn't listen to God. They did not listen to God. And God is the one who what? Wants to profit your life. You're like, oh, hallelujah, if I get on the right way, then my life is going to be man, full of riches and blessings. And man, I'm not going to have any problem, no payments anymore. I'm not going to have all that. No, God's not talking about that. He's talking about the riches and blessings of life that happen. How many love the fact that your family is going forward with God? Is that not a blessing? How many hate the fact that they're not going forward with God? And a lot of it rests on our shoulders as far as what are we doing? What are we showing? Are we being, are we being an influence of demonic influence when something comes into our life and our family's looking at it and it's like, well, I wonder how they're going to handle this one and we handle it wrong. I wonder how they're going to handle this one. I wonder, oh man, some this place that came home and Boom, blew up.
when we handle it God's way, then God is given the glory. And when God is given the glory, then all men, all mankind, comes to God. Do you have anything to do with somebody's salvation? I have to say, yes, you do. And you know why I say, yes, you do? Because it's your choice on whether you're going to be obedient to God so that your light will shine or it's your choice to not be obedient to God so then your light will not shine. And in our lives, we hold, listen, we hold and will be responsible for the blood of those that are going to be cast out into utter what? Darkness in the lake of fire. Because why? Because we said, yea, hath God said? Or we say, oh, it's not going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt. Will it? It does. The next couple weeks, I want to get into this. I want to get into deeper. I want to give you the, the power, which is Jesus Christ. But I can stand up here and I can say all these things, but there's so much things that are deeper. Why a certain person acts this way? Why they, why they choose this way? And there's things that are attached to their life that have them choose this way. And I want you to have direction from Jesus Christ to stop it. Stop it. We can be so critical of other people. Can we not? We can look at someone and go, you shouldn't act that way. You, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't dress that way. You shouldn't talk that way. You shouldn't, you shouldn't. When in reality, it's I shouldn't. The Holy Spirit works through you individually. And Jesus Christ says this, to love your enemy and love your neighbor as yourself. And how do you do that? By loving God first. Love the Lord your God with all, not part, all your heart, not part of your soul, not part of your spirit. The Bible says, it's very clear, all. Hey, I did this one, two weeks ago. You hear that? Did Jesus Christ knock on your door? Did he knock on your heart's door? Are you hearing him today too? Are we, did we shut the door to his, to his way? Of life? Have we shut the door because we wanted something else to come in? I, I can't have two doors in my life. I close the door to Christ and I open up a door to Satan. Or I will close the door to Satan or I, and I will open up the door to Christ. You can't walk on a fence line, it's either one or the other. And I really feel like we need to take a look at our own lives and go, look, which door is open the most? What is influencing my life the most? Did not Jesus Christ say, if you seek me, you will find me. But Satan says this, I seek you. Hey, the door's knocking. It could be Satan at the door. It could be. It could be a demonic influence that you're about ready to open. How do you know the difference? Through Jesus Christ. Because He is pure. He is righteous. And He wants the best for you. Let's stand and sing.